All right, my friends, we are still on the journey from platform nine and three quarters, chapter six. We're on page 92. Harry is looking for the platform nine and three quarters. He can find nine and he can find 10, but he can't find nine and three fourths. It doesn't exist. Harry swung around. The speaker was a plump woman who was talking to four boys, all with flaming red hair. Each of them was pushing a trunk like Harry's in front of him, and they had an owl. Harry, heart hammering, Harry pushed his cart after them. They stopped and so did he, just near enough to hear what they were saying. Now what's the platform number, said the boy's mother? Nine and three quarters, piped a small girl, also redheaded, who was holding her hand. Mom, can't I go? You're not old enough, Jenny, now be quiet. All right, Percy, you go first. What looked like the oldest boy marched toward platforms nine and 10. Harry watched careful not to blink in case he missed it. But just as the boy reached the dividing barriers between the two platforms, a large crowd of tourists came swarming in front of him, and by the time the last backpack had cleared away, the boy had vanished. Fred, you next, the plump woman said. I'm not Fred, I'm George, said the boy. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother? Can't you tell I'm George? Sorry, George, dear. Only joking, I'm Fred, said the boy, and off he went. His twin called after him to hurry up. And he must have done so because a second later he had gone, but how had he done it? Now the third brother was walking briskly toward the barrier. He was almost there and then quite suddenly he wasn't anywhere. There was nothing else for it. Excuse me, Harry said to the plump woman. Hello, dear, she said. First time at Hogwarts? Ron's new too. She pointed at the last and youngest of her sons. He was tall, thin and gangly with freckles, big hands and feet and a long nose. Yes, said Harry. The thing is, the thing is, I don't know how to, how to get onto the platform, she said kindly, and Harry nodded. Not to worry, she said. All you have to do is walk straight at the barrier between platforms nine and 10. Don't stop and don't be scared. You'll crash into it. That's very important. Best do it at a bit of a run if you're nervous. Go on, go now before Ron. Uh, okay, said Harry. He pushed his trolley around and stared at the barrier. It looked like a solid wall. He started to walk toward it. People jostled him on their way to platforms nine and 10. Harry walked more quickly. He was going to smash right into that barrier and then he'd be in trouble. Leaning forward on his cart, he broke into a heavy run. The barrier was coming nearer and nearer. He wouldn't be able to stop. The cart was out of control. He was a foot away. He closed his eyes ready for the crash and it didn't come. He kept on running. He opened his eyes. A scarlet steam engine was waiting next to a platform packed with people. A sign overhead said Hogwarts Express, 11 o'clock. Harry looked behind him and saw a wrought iron archway where the barrier had been with the words platform nine and three quarters on it. He had done it. Smoke from the engine drifted over the heads of the chatter chattering crowd, while cats of every color wound here and there between their legs. Owls hooted to one another in a disgruntled sort of way over the babble and the scraping of heavy trunks. The first few carriages were already packed with students, some hanging out of the window to talk to their families, some fighting over seats. Harry pushed his cart off down the platform in search of an empty seat. He passed a round-faced boy who was saying, Gran, I've lost my toad again. Oh, Neville, he heard the old woman sigh. A boy with dreadlocks was surrounded by a small group. Give us a look, Lee, go on. The boy lifted the lid of a, bo of a box in his arms, and the people around him shrieked and yelled as something inside poked out a long, hairy leg. Harry passed on through the crowd until he found an empty compartment near the end of the train. He put Hedwig inside first and then started to shove and heave his trunk toward the train door. He tried to lift it up the steps but couldn't hardly raise one end, and twice he dropped it painfully on his foot. Want a hand? It was one of the red-haired twins he'd followed through the barrier. Yes, please, Harry panted. Oi, Fred, come here and help. With the twins' help, Harry's trunk was at last tucked away in the corner of the compartment. Thanks, said Harry, pushing his sweaty hair out of his eyes. What's that, said one of the twins, suddenly looking at Harry's lightning scar on his forehead. Blimey, said the other twin, are you? He is, said the first twin. Aren't you? He added to Harry. Harry, what, asked Harry. Harry Potter, chorused the twins. Oh, him, said Harry. I mean, yes, I am. The two boys gawked at him, and Harry felt himself turning red. 
Then to his relief, a voice came floating in through the train's open door. Fred, George, are you there? Coming, Mom. With a last look at Harry, the twins hopped off the train. Harry sat down next to the window where, half hidden, he could watch the red-haired family on the platform and hear what they were saying. Their mother had just taken out her handkerchief. Ron, you've got something on your nose. The youngest boy tried to jerk out of the way, but she grabbed him and began rubbing the end of his nose. Mom! He wriggled his face. I, I as ickle Ronnie got something on his nose, said one of the twins. Shut up, said Ron. Where's Percy, said their mother. He's coming now. The oldest boy came striding into sight. He had already changed into his billowing black Hogwarts robes, and Harry noticed a shiny red and gold badge on his chest with the letter P on it. Can't stay long, mother, he said. I'm up front. The prefects have got two compartments to themselves. Oh, are you a prefect, Percy? said one of the twins with an air of great surprise. You should have said something. We had no idea. Hang on, I think I remember him saying something about it, said the other twin. Once or twice, a minute, all summer. Oh, shut up, said Percy the prefect. How come Percy gets new robes anyway, said one of the twins. Because he's a prefect, said their mother fondly. All right, dear, we'll have a good turn. Send me an owl when you get there. She kissed Percy on the cheek and he left. Then she turned to the twins. Now you two, this year you behave yourself. If I get one more owl telling me you've, you've blown up a toilet or blown up a toilet, we've never blown up a toilet. Great idea though, thanks mom. It's not funny. And look after Ron. Don't worry, Ickle Ronnie Kins is safe with us. Shut up, said Ron again. He was almost as tall as the twins already, and his nose was still pink where his mother had rubbed it. Hey, Mom, guess what? Guess who we just met on the train? Harry leaned back quickly so they couldn't see him. You know that black-haired boy who was near us in the station? Know who he is? Who? Harry Potter. Harry heard the little girl's voice. Oh, Mom, can I go on the train and see him? Mom, oh, please. You've already seen him, Jenny, and the poor boy isn't something you goggle at in the, like in a zoo. Is he really, Fred? How do you know? Asked him. Saw a scar. It's really there, like lightning. Poor dear. No wonder he was alone. I wondered. He was ever so polite when he asked how to get onto the pl platform. Never mind that. Do you think he knows what you-know-who looks like? Their mother suddenly became very strong. I forbid you to ask him, Fred. Don't you dare. As though he needs reminding of that on his first day of school. All right, keep your hair on. A whistle sounded. Hurry up, their mother said. And the three boys clambered onto the chain train. They leaned out the window for her to kiss them goodbye, and their youngest sister began to cry. Don't, Jenny. We'll send you loads of owls. We'll send you a Hogwarts toilet seat. George! Only joking, Mom. The train began to move. Harry saw the boy's mother waving at their sister, the boy's mother waving, and their sister half laughing, half crying, running to keep up with the train until it gathered too much speed. Then she fell back and waved. Harry watched the girl and his mother disappear as the train rounded the corner. Houses flashed past the window. Harry felt a great leap of excitement. He didn't know what he was going to, but it had to be better than what he would been leaving behind. The door of the cart compartment slid open and the youngest red-headed boy came in. Anyone sitting here, he asked, pointing at the seat opposite Harry. Everyone everywhere else is full. Harry shook his head and the boy sat down. He glanced at Harry and then looked quickly out the window, pretending he hadn't noticed. Harry saw he still had a black mark on his nose. Hey, Ron, the twins were back. Listen, we're going down the middle of the train. Lee Jordan's got a giant tarantula down there. Right, mumbled Ron. Harry, said the other twin, did we introduce ourselves? Fred and George Weasley, and this is Ron, our brother. Our brother. See you later then. Bye, said Harry and Ron. The twins slid the compartment door shut behind them. Are you really Harry Potter? Ron blurted out. Harry nodded. Oh, well, I thought it might be one of Fred and George, George's jokes, said Ron. And have you really got, you know, he pointed at Harry's forehead. Harry pulled back his bangs to show the lightning scar. Ron stared. So that's where you know who? Yes, said Ron, but I can't remember it. Nothing, said Ron eagerly. Well, I remember a lot of green light, but nothing else. Wow, said Ron. He sat and stared at Harry for a few minutes. Then as though he had suddenly realized what he was doing, he looked quickly out of the window again. Are all your family wizards? asked Harry, who found Ron just as interesting as Ron found him. 
Uh, yes, I think so, said Ron. I think Mom's got a second cousin who's an accountant, but we never talk about him. You must know loads of magic already. The Weasleys were clearly one of those old wizarding families the pale boy and Diagon Ellie had been talking about. I heard you went to live with muggles, said Ron. What are they like? Horrible. Well, not all of them. My aunt and uncle and cousin are, though. Wish I'd had three wizard brothers. Five, said Ron. For some reason, he was looking gloomy. I'm the sixth in our family to go to Hogwarts. You could say I've got a lot to live up to. Bill and Charlie have already left. Bill was head boy and Charlie was captain of Quidditch. Now Percy's a prefect. Fred and George mess around a lot, but they still get really good marks, and everyone thinks they're really funny. Everyone expects me to do as well as the others, but if I do, it's no big deal, because they did it first. You never get anything new either with five brothers. I've got Bill's old robes, Charlie's old wand, and Percy's old rat. And that's where we're going to stop there, as Harry and Ron become friends. We'll start again tomorrow on Chapter 6, The Journey from Platform 9 and 3 quarters.